What is up my peepholes, this is your guy Kali, and welcome back to Budget Buys. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at the iHaper HP1. This is a high resolution audio player, sometimes referred to as a FLAC player, and it was provided free of charge for this review from the folks over at iHaper. Now I know what some of you are thinking, why does a dedicated audio player even matter in this day and age, especially since smartphones fill that niche perfectly? And that point is especially driven home now that Apple has discontinued every version of the iPod outside of the iPod Touch, which admittedly is basically a smartphone without the ability to make calls. And the answer to that is simple. There are plenty of situations where you want to listen to music, podcasts, audiobooks, etc., and you don't quite want to bring your phone with you. I know I'd rather not risk damaging my phone at the gym or running or anything like that, so yeah, there's definitely still a place for dedicated audio players. Now, in the run-up to this video, I actually did a good bit of digging into the third-party audio player market, and things got kind of interesting. Now, admittedly, you could go out and buy yourself a generic MP3 player for between $5 and $20, and it'll be perfectly fine to use. However, it will not be high resolution. In fact, there's a bit of a format war going on right now in the high-res market. And as such, you can find devices with tons of different features across an entire spectrum of prices. The price range I was seeing for lossless audio players goes from between $50 and several hundred dollars. Heck, if you really have deep pockets, Sony actually has one out that costs a little over a grand. And to be perfectly honest, I don't see myself ever needing something that pricey for this purpose, but let's say my channel got to 100,000 subscribers, maybe I'll pick one up and review it. Until then, I'm gonna stay away. That being said, let's dive into this little guy. I'll go ahead and pull it out of the box, which loves to stay shut. There we go. And ain't it cute? Now, if you're wondering where the HP One sits on that pricing scale I mentioned earlier, it actually lands itself on the lower cost end of the market, bringing in at only $70. Now, I know that's a bit more expensive than the other items I've been covering on this series, but Taking into account what it is and what they typically run, it's definitely a budget buy worthy product. Even better, despite a lower price point than a lot of the other lossless audio players on the market, they really didn't cut corners when it comes to features. Alright, I've got it out of the box, so let's take a closer look at these features. First and foremost, I want to point out that it has a really nice full metal body with some really interesting geometry on it. I like the beveled edges that oppose each other. I'm kind of a sucker for asymmetrical design, what can I say? Next up is the glass faceplate, which looks really nice, though admittedly it is a magnet for fingerprints, so you might want to keep a wipe with you. And as for the controls, what you have are three face buttons, a power button at the top along with a recessed reset switch, and a multi-purpose analog wheel. I really dig this actually because I am a sucker for analog controls. Now, on the bottom, what we have is the headphone jack, a micro SD card, which this came packaged with an 8GB card, though it does support up to 128GB. I actually tested it using the card in my camera, as well as a USB-C port for charging and transferring data. And speaking of charging, this claims to completely charge within one and a half hours, though admittedly I never did run the battery down all the way, mainly because it claims to have a 20 hour playback time and I didn't want to leave it running that long. In fact, thinking of the playback time, that's another reason why a dedicated audio player still has a place in today's society, because you can listen to 20 hours of music without having to worry about your phone dying on you. And the last feature I want to talk about before we get into the operation side of things is the DAC mainly because I have seen this question pop up several times in other FLAC player review comment sections. The DAC in this little guy is the AK4376, which claims to output music at 192kHz, 24-bit, aka studio quality of one of the highest grades. Anyway, let's turn this on and show you how to work this thing, shall we? First off, we hold the top button down for a couple of seconds, and that powers us on. Let's let it go through the loading screen. Oh, it looks like it remembers the last song I was on, which is a great feature. It remembers my last song and place. So if I'm listening to something long like a podcast or an audiobook, I'm safe. 
Anyway, what we have here is a back button. So let's use that to get to the main menu. There we go. Now here we have a forward and back button, both for navigating the tracks as a skip, or if you do a long press, it will actually scroll through the song itself. As for the multi-function scroll wheel, you use that to navigate this menu here. So let me go ahead and just bring it back to the songs. And I'll talk about some of the other features in a second. There we go, music. Press it inward to select. And that also operates as your play pause button. There we go, as you can see, I'm uh, apologizing in advance for all of the camera shaking that's gonna happen. So actually, let's pick this up and play again. Now let's navigate back one more time to talk about two pretty unique features. Because actually, let's go back to the song one more time and show you that this scroll wheel, when you're in the song, actually is used to control the volume. You can see the volume indicator right there. Hopefully this new camera is picking that up well. It has a setting between 0 and 31, which admittedly doesn't sound like much of a sweep on the volume, but if I go here and I'm navigating all of this through my viewfinder here, ah, play settings, you'll find a pretty unique feature. Amp level, there we go. It has between one and 14 for the amp level which actually gives you even more control over the volume. I'm just gonna leave it at seven though. It seems to be doing well for me. Back up to the menu to show you one more feature that you have on this that not every one of the cheapo MP3 players I've checked out in the past have, and that is an equalizer. This is a seven band equalizer with seven different presets, as well as the ability to do your own, which is really nice. Typically, I go without a preset, though, just because I like listening to music as it was originally designed. I'm not trying to be pretentious there. I just really haven't found a preset that I like. Also, if you hit the top button while it's turned on, what that does is lock the player so you don't accidentally navigate while it's in your pocket. And now that I've shown you the inner workings of this little guy, let me make the case for the improved audio quality because I'm far from an audiophile and even I noticed that there is a distinct improvement when you're jumping from a CD quality audio track to a studio audio quality track. Now I wanna preface this by saying pretty much every review I've ever come across for audiophile grade audio has been kinda of lacking. The way they describe the audio is being bigger and to be perfectly honest, until I experienced it for myself, that meant nothing to me. And because most of you still haven't experienced it, it probably means nothing to you. So let's see if I can put this into words. Now, I wasn't using audiophile grade headphones. Instead, I was trying things out with a couple pairs of monitors I have, both over ear and in ear, just to see how things measure up. And to be perfectly honest, I feel like the flat profile on the monitors really did point out the differences. And I finally understand what people mean when they say it sounds bigger and it's not in a grandiose sense it's not like you just had a massive action scene happen instead it's subtle it's like going from a small room to outside it's that distinct one of the best ways i can describe it is kind of like the difference between listening to a cd and a live performance and i don't mean a pre-recorded live performance i mean you're standing right there in the venue now, most of the tracks I was using to test this audio player were actually acoustic jazz, which might confuse some of you because of my many mentions of Mellow Death for Life, but the fact of the matter is, jazz really does it for me. The reason I listen to metal, especially the more melodic subgenres, is mainly due to the complexity of the compositions, and that is definitely present in jazz. And the fact that I've played countless hours of Fallout has probably helped shape my opinion of the genre. I did most of my testing using two different versions of the same songs. One of them was at 44.1 kHz 16-bit, aka CD quality audio, and the other was between 96 and 192 kHz 24-bit, aka studio audio. And on the first version, things sounded great. I mean, CD quality audio is still going to sound really good coming out of this little guy. But the moment I navigated over to the studio quality track, things got interesting. When the song moved on to a more complex part, 
I could really pick out subtle nuance. Sometimes the difference was in the drums, where some of the lighter taps weren't really being picked up, or at least being muted quite a bit in the CD quality audio, where they were front and center in the studio track. Or sometimes the notes from the piano or the acoustic bass were ringing just a little bit longer. And I know it sounds inconsequential, but it made such a huge difference when it came to filling out the room, so to speak. But to be perfectly honest, I don't think I can do the experience justice. It's one of those things where you have to hear to believe. And I feel the HP-1 actually does a really nice job delivering a beginner's audiophile experience on a beginner's budget. You don't have to break the bank to experience this, even with your headphones. Because I'll be perfectly honest, the headphones that I had the best experience with do not retail for a couple hundred dollars. More like under a hundred dollars. And of course, this experience got my creator gears turning, because there are two very popular genres out there right now that are not taking advantage of lossless audio, or at least not by much. And those genres are podcasts and ASMR videos. Now, I know most of you are probably familiar with podcasts, which are basically just spoken word programs, and if recorded properly and presented on a device like this, it will sound like you're not listening to a recording, but instead you're sitting right next to them in the room. And for the uninitiated, what ASMR is, is auditory sensory meridian response. Think of the pleasurable tingling you get down your spine when you hear certain sounds. I didn't even think I was susceptible to that. I've watched a few ASMR videos and had zero reaction. And yet, listening to some of the music on this device, those very soft drum taps kind of made the hairs on the back of my arm stand up. So imagine, if somebody like me was affected by that on a device like this, what would happen to an ASMR track saved in flack and then played back on one of these devices? Who knows, it might even sound less like they're crinkling that wrapper towards a microphone and more like they're crinkling it right next to your ear. And during my quest to find things to review for budget tubing, I may or may not have gotten my hands on the gear needed to record at 192.24. And I've got a few candy wrappers lying around, so if there are enough people who want it down in the comments, maybe I'll try a lossless ASMR recording. Well, anyway, that's enough rambling about the potential uses for flack. Before I sign off, I do want to say one thing. I do agree with the people who say once you hit a certain level of audio quality, going any higher will give you diminishing returns, if anything, and most people won't be able to hear the difference at that point. But I'll also say, based on my experiences with the HP-1, that there is indeed something to be gained moving upward from CD quality audio. Truthfully, I was hoping to capture some sample audio from this device to show you the differences, but it turns out YouTube is most likely going to be crunching the audio in this video, so you would not have been able to tell a dang thing. Oh well, you'll just have to check the description down below and decide whether or not you want to take the first step to beginner audio them. And on the topic of audio, I've got a ton more mics to review for budget tubing, so until next time, this is your guy Cly, signing off.